Hey everybody, welcome back to Art. I'm happy that you're here with me. Today we're going to be working on a product, a project of opposites. You guys know what opposites are, right? What is the opposite of light? It's dark. What is the opposite of big? It's small. What is the opposite of left? It's right. We all know what our opposites are, right? But what about in art? Think about it for a second. If we were to talk about opposites in art, what kinds of things could we use as examples to create opposites? Well, we could use size, shape, color, right? We can use position, could be up or down, could be left or right, could be vertical or horizontal, right? Vertical goes up and down, horizontal goes side to side. Well, we're going to be concentrating on opposites because opposites are um, something important to understand in art because we need to understand how light and dark work together with colors and in painting and in using color to create shades and shadows. But for today, the reason why I wanted to do opposites with you today is because Monday, the 25th of January, is National Opposite Day. So I thought it would be fun to do a, pro a project. I keep saying product for some reason. I thought it would be fun to do a project based on opposites. And one of the things that I know is pretty popular amongst the age groups here at school are yin yangs, right? You guys know what yin yangs are? They're the famous black and white symbols. Um, they, it's in a circ inside of a circle and the white side of the yin yang contains a little black dot and the black side of the yin yang contains a little white dot. But do you know the story about yin yangs? Well, I'm gonna read you a little blurb from a book that I have about yin yangs and then we're gonna do a, a yin yang together on paper and you guys at home are going to get to decide what colors you wanna use. You, you don't have to use black and white for this project. But if you want to, you can, or you can be free to explore other uh, colors. And we're going to talk about complementary colors in a couple of minutes when we start the, uh, the project. So I'm going to read to you um, what it says about yin yangs in my, in my little book. It says that yin and yang have been around since 200 BCE. BCE stands for be before common era. They come from the ancient Chinese religion and philosophy. The dark and the light parts of the yin-yang symbol are opposites that complement each other. They have equal areas. In Chinese philosophy, the two together bring balance. So you have the light brings, you know, balances the dark and the dark balances out the light. Yin, the black section, represents dark, cold, feminine, softness, and even numbers. Yang, the white section, represents light, warm, male, hardness, and odd numbers. Okay, so that's just a little bit of history of, of the yin and the yang, um, and how we're gonna how we're gonna use it today is very similar to what I just described. We're going to be thinking about opposites, and we're going to be thinking about you know one side being darker than the other. So you're gonna need to kind of think about that when you're picking out your colors, um, whether you're using crayons or paints or colored pencils or watercolors. Even you're gonna need to think about balance. Okay, because we're not gonna have two two colors like pink and red necessarily because they're kind of in the same uh, group, right? Pink is just um, a lighter shade of red. If you add white to red, you get pink. Um, so if they were very, very opposite, if it was very, very light pink and very, very dark red, then yes, you can. But if they're similar uh, colors, you don't want to use that for this project. You want to do something that's opposite. So we're going to talk about complementary colors in just a minute, okay? All right, so let me go to the overhead camera here and let's get started. You're gonna need a few basic supplies, okay? Now, we're gonna be working on regular eight and a half by 11 white copy paper, if, if you've got that. If you don't have that, you have something else, that's okay. Um, but I'm gonna kinda standardize what you need to make it easy for you, no matter what size paper you're working on. I have here, this is from the dollar store. It was part of a game that fell apart and we don't use it anymore as the game, but it's the right size circle that I need for tracing today. And this is my ruler. The circle measures about seven inches. Okay, so seven is right here. So around here is one, or zero actually, I started measuring at zero, and it's just about seven inches. So that's the perfect size to fit onto the paper. But you're gonna need to go on a little scavenger hunt and find some circular objects around your house, which could be kind of fun. You could actually turn it into a game with your siblings or somebody to play with at home, you can kind of turn it into a circle game and find all different shapes circles. And there's lots of fun things that you can do with circles in art. So if you find a seven inch circle or about seven inch circle, 
that would be great. A little bit bigger, a little bit smaller is okay. And you're going to just put it right in the center of your paper. Actually, here's what I'm going to have you do. I'm going to have you take your paper and I'm going to have you fold it in half so that the sides are matched up and equal. Okay, kind of like folding a greeting card. And then fold it again in the middle. Doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but as close as perfect as you can get. All right, so once it's this size, I'm going to open it back up again. Those creased lines are just going to kind of help you as guides. If you don't like creases in your paper, if that's going to bother you, then don't do that part. Skip that part. But that's just going to help you divide it up into quadrants, four quadrants, so that you can kind of measure things a little bit better. And you put your circle right on the middle of your paper, and you go ahead and you give it a trace. I'm going to trace kind of dark so you guys can see with the overhead camera. You don't have to trace it around three or four times. I'm doing that so that my pencil looks darker. All right. Now I've got my nice perfect circle here, okay? I say it's perfect because I obviously traced something that was perfectly circular, so it's going to make a perfect circle. Okay, those creases that you made are going to help be your, be your lines to help guide you. So what you're going to do now is that center line, I'm just going to put a little bit of a light pencil mark. I'm going to erase it later. Okay, so I've made a cross. You do see some other lines on there because I was practicing drawing this first. So we've got a cross here, right? Okay. So now what you're going to do is, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can find um, a circle that is about the size of, this tape deck is a little too big. Um, I was looking for things in the art room that were going to measure this perfectly and I didn't find anything that was going to be a perfect um, measure. And I didn't have a compass in here, so I kind of had to improvise a little bit. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make the, the sim, the, uh, divide this in half uh, to get one side that looks like that little like fish, almost looks like a little fish, a squiggly fish. So here's my middle, and I'm going to go into this quadrant, and I'm going to make a semicircle. I'm going to pretend that there's another side to this. I'm not really going to draw the other side to it. Kind of like making an S, and then I'm going to go down here and make the other side of the S. So it looks like an S, okay? It's an S, it's just not, if I was making a regular S, I would do it like that, but I don't want to cross over into that side. And so once you have that, you're going to find something that's about the size of a quarter. Now, I didn't have a quarter, so I'm using the inside of this tape right here, that's about the right size. And I'm gonna trace, Again, I'm doing this dark so you can see. And then I'm gonna go up here, I'm right on this line, so half of my circle crosses over, see how that line is right there? Half of that circle crosses over, and the other half is on the other side of that line, okay? Same thing up here. Looking to try to make it almost exactly half. Those lines that I drew are guides. And if you drew your lines too, you draw them lightly so you can erase them. Okay, so now we've got our yin-yang symbol. And now we're going to talk about color in a second. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to erase all these extra lines that I don't need now anymore. Carefully, okay? And then I'll show you what it, you're going to want it to look like. Mine's a little sloppy because I've been doing a lot of sketching and drawing lots of lines. But... It's going to get covered up with color. So I'm just cleaning up the lines. Clean up any stray lines that you don't want to see. If you're going to be coloring in marker, you can kind of not be so worried about covering up all the lines or erasing all the lines because they're going to get covered up with marker. So don't worry too much. Okay. All right, now, here's where the fun creative part comes into play. I don't want you to stop here. I want you to think about how you could turn this into something else. Okay, it's going to say a yin-yang symbol, but we're going to add to it. I'm going to show you what I mean. We're going to think about color. 
and we're going to think about shapes. Okay, colors and shapes. So remember I said before we need to think about um, opposite colors. So you could obviously do the black and the white. Um, and we're going to talk about complementary colors. So on the color wheel, you guys have seen the color wheel before, but if you have it, I'm going to attach a color wheel for you. So I'm going to write color wheel up here so you guys will refer to that. The color wheel will show you that at the top of the color wheel, I'm going to do it over here on this side, we've got yellow. The bottom of the color wheel, we've got, it's like kind of think of it as a triangle. We've got red and we've got blue. Okay? It's kind of like a triangle. In between yellow and blue are your secondary colors. So we've got green. In between red and blue, if you mix red and blue together, what do you get? You get purple. And if you mix yellow and red together, you get orange. Okay. Complementary colors are opposite colors. I know complementary kind of sounds like they go together, and they do go together. They work together even though they're opposites. So the complementary color of yellow would be red. The complementary color of red would be blue. The complementary color of red and blue is yellow, and so on and so forth. Complementary color of blue is yellow. Okay, so it's basically whatever's on the opposite side. Orange and green are complementary colors. Purple and yellow are complementary colors. Orange and blue are complementary colors. Green and red are complementary colors. Okay, so you see they, they're all related to each other and they all work together as kind of like a team. So when you're picking your colors for your yin-yang, I want you to look at the diagram. Um, I'm actually going to include a diagram to show you so that you can uh, have some help with it, okay? But remember, your primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. Your secondary colors are orange, green, and purple. And whatever's on the opposite of one color is the complement to it, okay? All right, so flipping back over, I think I'm going to do... Well, I'm not sure what colors I'm going to do yet. And I'm going to show you why I don't know what colors I'm going to do yet. Because I don't know what I'm going to turn this into. So I drew it this way, but I'm going to turn it over on its side now. And I'm going to look at what these two things could actually become. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe I like the idea of birds. I'm going to draw a beak here. And then I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to draw a beak here. And then I'm going to do, since I'm on this side already, I'm going to do, I'm going to do feathers. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do more feathers. So now I've turned these into, can you see, birds. And when I flip it over, it's the same on the other side. And that's how I'm going to approach my yin yang here. I'm turning these into animals. Now you can turn them into animals or you can turn them into uh, scenes inside. Some A popular one could be like night and day. If you think about opposites in, our, in, in life, you know, think about some opposites and how can you represent those opposites inside of here. So let's say you were going to do night and day. Well obviously one side that you pick to be night is going to be the dark side, right? And the other side that you pick to be light is going to be the light side. So if you were going to if you were going to draw that for nature, maybe you can think of nighttime and daytime, right? Night and day. So how would the night sky look? Would it be dark? Would it be blue, black, gray? What color would it be? And what about the light side? Think about the sun comes up in the morning. What are the colors outside that you that you know that you notice? And when the sun's going down at night, what are the colors that you notice? So think about that. Maybe you want to spend some time observing outside before you before you do that. Um, so that way you can kind of make a little list, take out a notebook with you outside in the morning and at nighttime, and just observe the sky. It's kind of like including science in your in your art as well. And write down the colors that you notice when it's dark. Not I'm not talking about like five o'clock dark. I'm talking about like six or seven o'clock dark when the sun's really going down and it starts to get dark outside. Okay. And then in the morning when you wake up, if you wake up at like 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the morning, peek outside your window and kind of look off into the horizon and see what colors you notice. 
the nice light colors, the, the, the dark of the night is leaving and the morning light is coming up, what colors do you notice? Write those down. Those could be included. Or you could, again, you could focus on turning these into animals. What kind of animals could they turn into? Well, I turned mine into birds, but you could turn them into fish or whales or, uh, I don't know, norwals maybe. I don't know. You have to think about what you could do with this shape, this round kind of shape. Or you could just do cool colors, okay? All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to color this in. So I'm going to pause for a second and go grab my colors. All right, guys. I grabbed my colors. I decided I'm going to be doing bluish purple and orange in like a peachy color, okay? And so that's what I'm going to do. Now remember, within one side is going to have a little bit of the other side. That's where the balance comes from, okay? So my, my blue side... Boy, I haven't worked with crayons in a long time. My blue side is going to contain just a little bit of the orange in the eye. Because that's what that circle represents. The circle represents a little bit of what's on the other side. Okay. I'm going to leave the beak alone just for a second. And I'm just going to focus on kind of using that blue and the purple. I'm kind of using them interchangeably. Use my blue and purple bird. And I'm not telling you to go this quick. I'm just kind of trying to go through it quickly to get, to get you to the end of the video here so you're not bored watching me color. Okay, and I'm going to darken up these wings a little bit so you guys can see. Oh, I hurt my thumb. I had a splint on it, and it still hurts. I think I sprained it, and I took the splint off of it today because it's been like three or four days, and it still hurts, so please forgive me. This isn't how I would normally color, <laughs> but I can't color normally right now. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to... Give that beak a little bit of color. All right, now I'm going to flip this over. Now on this side, I'm making my bird mostly orange. I'm going to do this light. I'm going to start with this apricot color. And then I'm going to go over it with the darker orange. So I'm, this is called layering color. When you layer color, you... That's what you're doing. You're building up a layer, layers of color. So it gives it more depth. Depth in art is not just about like how we use depth of water, like how many feet is that pool, how, how, how deep is that water. We're talking about depth of color. All right, so that's... Now I'm going to go back over with the dark orange. Remember, you guys are doing, you can, you can make a bird also, like I am, but I want you to try to think of something on your own, okay? If you can't think of anything else, of course, you can do the bird with me. And now his eye on this side is going to have some of the blue and the purple from the other side for balance. And his beak on this side. I'm just going for it. He's going to have a purple beak. Why not? It's my world. I can make a purple beak if I want to on my bird. And so can you. All right. Oh, my orange crayon got mad and ran away. Okay. Now you're spending more time on this at home. You have a whole week to do this. So you can really take your time if you want to and really dive into this and make this how you want it to be. But how cool is that? We took our 
just using basic shape of circle, and we turned it into a really cool geometric art project called the Yin Yang, and you made it your way. All right, guys, have fun with these. I would love to see what you guys create. Please, please send me a picture, okay? And enjoy this. And if it doesn't come out right the first time, just keep trying. Just keep working on it. But make sure you use the color wheel that I'm going to attach with the video so that you guys can refer to it and kind of look that over and, um, you know, use that as a guide to help you figure out your complementary colors, okay? All right, everybody. Have a great day. See you soon. Thanks for watching.